Hi friend, it's Min. I hope you're having a fantastic day and you had the opportunity to enjoy the outdoors. Today, let's chat about what to do if your begonia maca leaves are dropping. And this applies to all kind types of begonias across the board, not just the maculata or things like white eyes. It also applies things like to snow cap begonias as well. So the first step is locate where your begonia is. Is it in the area where it's too windy? too drafty because begonias like do do like some airflow around it but they don't like to have direct wind or draft blowing onto it so is it sitting underneath the air conditioning is it sitting directly underneath heating or is it too close to a window or a doorway and there's too much wind or draft blowing onto the leaves that can actually uh, make the leaves flap around and especially the young delicate leaves that can actually break them off the stem. Also with that sort of draft around the plant, it can lower the humidity and begonias don't like to be in an area where it has low humidity. So the next step is check the humidity. So humidity is what I'm talking about. Humidity is the moisture in the air and begonias are tropical plants. They are used to be in the tropical rainforest where there's lots of moisture in the atmosphere. So I find that my begonias like to have humidity of at least 60%. I tend to put my begonias near a humidifier because that's what I find the best way to increase the humidity in the household. Especially in winter when the heating's on, that can drop the humidity very quickly in the household. I don't tend to have my humidity above 75% because that can actually cause uh, fungus and uh, rot into that uh, well into the house so I try and to avoid going over 75% if you want to be more safe just don't go anything above 70% so the worst thing you can do is actually cause uh, a fungus um, issue into the household and if you don't have a humidifier I do have a video on increasing the humidity without using a humidifier. I'll pop a link down below and a link above as well. The next step is how is the plant being watered? Are the leaves getting wet? Begonias never like the leaves to be wet or stay wet for a long time because they're very prone to fungus on the leaves and fungus, especially things like powdery mildew, they are very prone to that and that can be they're very devastating to a begonia. To tell if there's fungus on the leaves, powdery mildew looks like little white specks on the leaves, like powder on the leaves. If you do find that, please treat it straight away or as soon as possible, because that can spread very quickly. I use a product called Yates Powder, uh, powder Gun, and uh, that's just a, a fungus insecticide, a strong fungus treatment and uh, I'm not sponsored by then, I just happen to like that product. Or it can sometimes, I also find that my um, begonia, it can be affected by things like rust rings as well, and rust rings or rust spots look like little yellow spots all over the leaves, and once again, just treat it straight away. It can also, begonias can be devastated by pests. So I have a begonia here, which is, this is a begonia, no cap it's actually a propagation it's a cutting that my friend gave to me it's one years old it should actually be bigger than this but it got devastated by aphids and then it got devastated by you wouldn't believe it by caterpillar so i found a caterpillar on it and it was a little bit late in the sense that the caterpillar had made a lot of holes in the young leaves and before i could find the caterpillar it actually ate most of the leaves and those leaves actually drop. So if you do find your begonia macula leaves are dropping, definitely uh, check for pests. And don't worry too much, once you get rid of the pest like this one, it's actually starting to grow some of its leaves back. So the other pests that uh, can be devastating on a begonia is the five, the other main household pests, like, so aphids, mealybugs, uh, thrips, uh, fungus gnats, and scales. I think for myself, it's more the aphids that I find that are the pests I get on my plants. So just treat it straight away or as soon as you can. And you can use things like neem oil to treat for aphids or the other pests. I don't think it's actually a great um, 
insecticide to treat thrips but for aphids and things like that they're fantastic and all I use is a solution that consists one liter of water 10 mils of neem oil and 10 mils of dishwashing solution and I just shake it all up and I spray it and I tend to spray it in the uh, morning where it's and also I put the plant away from the light when I'm actually using this insecticide because um, if you don't want to put it directly into the light after you sprayed it with neem oil because that can actually burn the leaves so yes uh, try and to avoid over, well getting the begonia leaves from being wet is the plant being underwatered or overwatered? Begonias like to soil to be moist, but they don't never like to be completely dry. They don't like to be sitting in soggy, muddy soil either. I tend to let my begonias dry to two thirds of the way before I water it again. And I use a water meter to check for that. If you don't have a water meter, don't worry, just use your finger, just go all the way down the pot two thirds of the way and fill. Have a feel of your finger. Is there? Is does it feel like there is some moisture there? Is there still some uh, soil sticking onto it? If there's still some soil sticking on your finger, it means the soil is still moist. If there's, if it's completely dry, it means that it needs to be watered. The other tip I have is that with repotting a begonia, is a, is a plant being repotted unnecessarily? Begonias tend to like the roots to be semi root bound. They don't like to be in a pot that's too big. They don't like too much soil in the pot. So unless repotting a begonia unnecessary in the pot that's too big or just disturbing the roots while repotting a begonia can actually put the plant under stress and the plant that's under stress will drop its leaves. It's also important at the time of repotting as well. And I tend to repot my begonias if I have to in spring and that's I choose that time because it's a start of the growing season where the plant has an opportunity because it's a little bit warmer the weather or there's more light as well the plant has more opportunity to further synthesize produce more nutrients to grow and also recover from repotting because generally in the end repotting the, you're always going to there will I just find it's always going to be bound to disturb the roots there's always going to be some root damage when repotting so try and avoid unnecessary repotting and repotting during spring rather than say winter the other tip I have is the lighting lighting is very important when become when it comes to begonias because begonias do like a lot of bright uh, indirect light they also can cope I find with direct morning light because morning light tends to be gentle so you, you, you can tell like in the morning when the light's coming in you don't actually feel any burning sensation on your own skin and that's the same with the plant if in the morning light it's quite gentle so they can actually cope with the direct uh, morning light so I place my begonia near an east uh, facing window where it sees a lot of uh, bright morning light and some direct morning light as well I would try and avoid south facing window or a window that receives direct afternoon light because direct afternoon light is very harsh you can feel it yourself that if you pop your hand near a window that has direct afternoon light it's a, it's like a burning sensation if you stay there for too long so that's the same with the plant if you pop a begonia in direct afternoon light it's actually going to burn the leaves and that's going to put the plant under stress. If you do need to put a plant in afternoon light, try and move it away from direct afternoon light. So put it in the area that receives indirect afternoon light. So for example, if I had to put my begonia near a south facing window, I would move it away three meters away from the south facing window. So it means that it receives a lot of light and afternoon light, but it's indirect afternoon light. The other tip I have is that when it comes to putting a begonia, is it in the area where you're kind of walking by it a lot of times and kind of knocking its leaves? And because knocking the leaves, the, the stem of begonia is not that strong. It is delicate. If you're going by it constantly and you're brushing 
on the leaves constantly that can damage the leaves especially the young leaves it can also damage the stem and that can break and that can fall and so try and put an area where there's enough path where you're not actually brushing it onto the leaves every single day and also try and um, I know it's very tempting but try and avoid not touching the leaves especially the young developing leaves uh, I'm I'm a culprit with that. I, you know, begonia macula leaves are so beautiful. I want to touch it, but you know, plants don't actually like them. They don't like to be touched. So try and avoid touching a begonia leaf, especially the developing leaf, because they're very delicate. So that's all the tips I have to diagnose what's happening if a begonia macula leaves are dropping. Uh, also, I would say, oh, actually, I've forgotten one more tip. Is the plant getting enough nutrients as well? Is there enough fertilizer? Because a begonia, well, they do need their fertilizing. So I would recommend a fertilizer begonia maculata if it's growing, if it's producing new leaves, whether it's the winter, summer, spring, or autumn. If it's producing new leaves, fertilize your plant. I tend to use a product called We The Wild uh, Growth, and I use a half strength of what the recommendation is. If you don't happen to have that product, then just use a well-balanced liquid fertilizer, but definitely reduce it down by half the concentration, half the recommended dosage, because uh, you don't want to, in the end, burn the roots of the begonia. So that's all the care tips I have and the tricks if you find your begonia maculata leaves are dropping. If you have any tips of your own, I'd love to read about it in the comment section down below. And thank you so much for watching the video. If you did like the video, please hit the likes button, subscribe to the channel. Truly helps me to be able to create more videos to help you take care of your plants and your begonias. And thank you so much. And don't forget, if you have any questions, just leave it down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day. You, you take care and I'll see you next time in the next video. Bye.